Welcome to Stalking the Wild Auto Harp. I'm Hal Weeks, and uh, we gather here on a weekly basis to talk about all kinds of auto harp related geeky subjects. And uh, today I want to share with you my new baritone tuning. I am going to let you in on this process that I've been going through actually for decades, um, always seeking more bass. Here's the thing. The auto harp is a trebly, sparkly, and some might say tinny instrument. And um, it's pointless to try to turn it into something it's not in our quest for more bass. I do feel like um, it is appropriate to try to compensate to some degree to try to bring in uh, a little bit um, more bass, especially so that we can get better bass for the keys that we have on our auto harp. The bodies on an auto harp is not deep enough to resonate a lot of bass. And some say that it's, that we should just stick with it as a trebly instrument and be done with it. And um, that's a good point. Um, but um, I feel and I have succeeded in getting better bass out of um, even a standard Oscar Schmidt auto harp. Um, this Oscar Schmidt, which I just tuned, so hopefully it's good, is in standard tuning. Oscar Schmidt and the historic um, tuning of the chromatic auto harp is optimized for the keys of C, F, and G. In other words, key of C with no flats, key of G with one sharp, and key of F with one flat. And then when you move out from those keys, you start dropping bass notes like crazy to the place where, you, yeah, you can play in that key, but you've got no bass notes. So key of F on the Schmidt. And you'll notice that I am strumming mainly the bass strings so that you can hear how they come out. Inside, they, we've got this big frame that goes around like this. Meaning that the only resonating cavity is about this big. And then it's got a thin little body shell, so no wonder no bass, right? So, you know, why not just call it a sparkly, trebly little instrument and call it done? Yeah, but you can push a little bit more bass out of this. I've got other videos on that um, about changing some of the bass strings out, actually out of order. Drop your D string an octave, drop your E string an octave, and drop your A string an octave. Yes. That's all there is to it. Play this again real quick. Key of F, key of C, and key of G. But when we get into key of D, key of A, It's only just kind of okay in those keys. Now see, as auto harpists, we tend to like key of D and key of A because those are the jamming keys, key of G, D, A. Um, and the jamming keys for folk music and Irish music and fiddle tunes and what have you tend to gravitate towards the sharp side of the spectrum, key of G, key of D, key of A. So what happens if you have, uh, uh, you want to play in those keys? Do you just keep the same string schedule? Well, that's what people do. And so um, what I started doing was beefing up the bass and giving myself really good low bass strings for those keys. And um, um, here is a, this is a Desert Rose. This is the one I built for myself. Uh, Daigle Desert Rose, and uh, it is also in standard tuning, although it has 
um, a good key of A on it. Um, here's what its tuning sounds like. <laughs> You can immediately hear the volume difference. Key of G. Now, because it's standard tuning, here's the key of D. You'll hear less bass in that than you will in, say, the key of G. Or the key of C. Here's the key of D. Still pretty good. Here's the key of A. Notice that the bass went away. Here's the key of C. Here's the key of A. So what if we want more bass? This is why I started experimenting. I dropped the A, I dropped the D, and I dropped the E, a whole octave, left them in place, but they were the lowest strings on my harp, and they were, they were um, uh, mixed in with the other bass notes. And I played that way for years, and a lot of the videos that I made on this series were made with that tuning. Um, but about a year ago, I started experimenting, well, more than that, two years ago, I started experimenting, making some other changes, made some arrangements, and then just this year, I developed this baritone tuning. And I'm going to show you that now. And I've actually released several videos in the baritone tuning already. Here it is, um, key of D. Here's the key of A. And here's the key of E. Now, you would think, being real bolstered up in those keys, that it would all be lacking um, back towards the key of C, um, etc. Well, here's the key of C, or here's the key of C. And here's the key of G. That's right, folks. Real strong bass for all the main chords in the keys of C, G, D, A, and E. So this is my baritone tuning. Now, here's the thing. You can't just tune your strings down to do this. It takes special strings. It takes fatter strings. On a standard auto harp, you've got wound strings up to about number 14, 13 or 14. But on this auto harp, the wound strings go all the way up to 18. That's right, half the auto harp is wound strings. It starts on low D, and it only goes up to A. And so this high string, which is the length that we use for the, key, the D string on a high 37 string auto harp, is all the way down at A. And so it has to be a fatter string so that it can be at tension, so that it is loud enough to resonate the way an auto harp should. So all the strings are fatter than standard. So it takes special gauges to do this. And um, some of the wound strings actually go up to the bridge. And when I had all of this calculated by Bob Lewis, um, he pointed out that it was going to need special strings. And otherwise, the windings would go across the bridge. Now. I agree, it needs special strings, but I did not do that yet. And the reason I didn't do it yet was because I wasn't sure I wanted to invest in a whole string set of special made strings if I wasn't going to like it. And so I went ahead and used standard strings. They go, the windings go right across the bridge on, let's see. 
one, two, three, four, five, no, three strings. Three strings go, have windings that go across the bridge. Um, the rest of them just go up to the bridge. So they're, they're okay. But fatter string gauges means special harp tuning. I don't think this tuning is going to work on an Oscar Schmidt because I haven't tried it. But the Oscar Schmidt with its smaller, thinner body um, isn't made to resonate big, beefy bass like that. Some of the downsides are, um, I'm not fully convinced yet that it's not too muddy in the bass. I can play whole melodies in this octave, which is actually um, the octave below metal, middle C. It might be a little bit muddy down there, but for chords, which I tend to play down here anyway, because it gives me that guitar octave, which supports my voice well in singing. But I also have this full octave for playing melody. But it's up higher and here's the thing is that a lot of times I don't play melody way up high because it's in a limited that limited little triangle area and I have to reach way up there and if I'm playing with my thumb I have to reach even further for the melody and um, that's when the melody is way up high well now I don't have that way up high because I cut off four notes at the top five notes at the top and um, I have to reach up for the notes that I'm used to playing those melodies on. I have to reach further to get them. So that's um, sort of uh, a downside and something that takes a while to get used to. But once you're used to it, um, I think it's worth it. So whether I play this auto harp exclusively in concertizing, I don't know. Right now it's set up for standard chromatic because I wanted to show it to you as a standard chromatic before I turn it into a prism, which some of you may know already is um, kind of a more advanced kind of auto harp that has um, 87 chords and it's still only got five keys, but it's got 87 chords within those five keys, open noting like a diatonic, um, diatonic sounds on a chromatic instrument. Um, and it's on the way to becoming that. Um, this Desert Rose is now my standard chromatic, and this one will be my prism. Um, but um, I feel like the baritone tuning is worthy of its name. I think it's worthy of um, consideration because it's got excellent bass notes in all five keys um, with good support through the minors and uh, really worth looking into. So I'm gonna put the um, actual note names in the comments section to this video. And as far as the gauges for those notes, that is information that I am going to put into an article that's going to go in the Auto Harp Quarterly. Not in the Auto Harp Quarterly that's about to come out, but the one that comes out three months down the road. I'm gonna do an article on this tuning um, covering everything I've said here, which has been very long-winded, um, and I'm going to give the actual chart with all the actual um, stringings and the uh, string gauges that you need to uh, convert your own. So if you don't subscribe to the Auto Harp Quarterly, why not get yourself a subscription so that you don't miss that article? Okay, I'm Hal Weeks. 
Um, I want to thank you for um, watching. If you want to support this program, go over to patreon.com and kick in a few bucks um, for a monthly subscription and uh, you'll be able to get in there and view the videos that I have over there. And there's an index to all things Talking to Wild Auto Harp at uh, halweeks.com where you can also find out about the lessons that I give online to people right in their very homes through Skype, through Zoom, through Google Meet. Um, and um, um, thanks for watching. This has been a long one, I think. And uh, appreciate your attention. Thanks for watching Stalking the Wild Auto Harp. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.